Welcome all back to the great outdoors. Today I'm going to be showing you how to take a beautiful turkey wing feather like this that you got off your turkey this turkey season, or maybe a buddy of yours, and turn them in to beautiful primitive arrow fletchings like this. So first step is getting your feathers off your wings. You can make fletchings out of tail feathers or wing feathers. I've done both, but the wing feathers, uh, they're stiffer. I like them a little bit better. Um, both are really cool though. Just make sure you're consistent with using either wing feathers or tail feathers, and then actually using right or left wing feathers, which we'll get into in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna get some big shears. You could use uh, wire snips, something like that. Uh, and then you're just going to need a, a sharp knife. You know, a pocket knife will do. Just make sure it's sharp. By the way, let's get a roost update. You may hear some cheeps in the background. That's because we got new baby chicks, y'all. The only two that I, I'm not sure are pullets are these frizzle chickens, which are just ornamental chickens, basically. Obviously not the quickest way to get eggs. It's going to take about six months for those to start laying. But there's some pretty cool breeds, and we'll probably get some more babies with having roosters. Okay, we've got our old tools here. We're ready to make some fletchings. So I'm gonna dig into my freezer over here. Right wing, left wing, really doesn't matter. Uh, it's whatever preference you want to use. Most people use right wing, but it just matters that you are consistent. Stick with right wings. Stick with left wings when you're making your fleshings. Uh, and you could also use tail feathers. So I know a lot of guys like to use them on their trophy mounts. You can use the fans on decoys, everything like that. Um, but you can also use them to make uh, fletching. Also, I will say you can go buy these if you just want the look of it. You can go buy them. They're just expensive. I guess because there's less of the resource. Uh, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. But I think it's probably because they take the turkey feathers off of, of like meat farms those turkeys like the white ones and they dye them and those are the cheaper ones and these these are the ones that are uh, you know a precious beautiful resource and more expensive kind of out in front here before these long big wing feathers you could use these if you wanted to to make some small fletchings like maybe some four inches um, but they're really not that long so I'm gonna snip these off first my daughter likes to collect feathers so I'm just gonna save these for her just like I could probably use that one right there but we're gonna need 10 inches of feather in order to make two fletchings which I'll show you guys here in just a second and now we've exposed these big beautiful wing feathers and I'm gonna snip those down as far as I can until there's not any feather material growing on it like that Ooh, it's a broken feather it must have taken a shotgun pellet that's one down we don't get 16 all right we probably we'll get one out of that so somewhere in the mid 20s um, is how many feathers you're going to get off a wing. This, give to your dog or whatever you want to do. Go in the woods. So once you get those cut off, it's a good idea, good idea to go ahead and store them in a labeled bag. But for today's video, we just need three of these fletchings. So we got our three feathers we're going to make six fletchings out of. Step one, I'm going to measure these. I need 10 inches out of them because I'm making five, five inch fletchings. The very, very end of this is going to be difficult to mount to your, to your arrow. And most people just take the middle, that premium section. But if, um, if you can, if you get one that's like 12 inches, 11, 12 inches, you can easily get two. This one is 11. Take the very end and I'm going to snip it about a half inch. I'm going to put that right in the middle. So 
take that five inch mark. There, we've got two five inch fletchings. I'm gonna split these in half now. You'll see a little groove running through the quill here. It's like a little trough. You know, take a take a knife, take a pocket knife, and you can just kind of roll your blade into that. So I'll put the, like the, the tip of the blade into the cutting board of the table that I'm using, and then I'll just kind of roll it down until you hear it crack, and just keep scooting it. You don't want to pull it just yet because if you're using a real sharp knife, it will it'll want to pull into those feathers. It's going to want to go one way and you don't want it to go into the feathers so we'll just kind of work that down definitely favor that shallow side because you don't want to mess up your your good side and once you get close to the end you can start to pull it pull it through the only thing i need to need to do to this one is sand it down just to make it kind of flush because if you're shooting like me <clears throat> primitive style off the knuckle that is going to hit your knuckle it's not going to be pleasant and I like to do an arrow uh, uh, I like to do some thread wraps on the front of the fletching as well and having that big raised quill does not do well so that one's ready to stick onto an arrow here's how you get more out of your turkey feathers so I've got this fatter side which would normally be discarded. We're going to split it. You can see that fat trough and that quill. Even though you've got more room to work with, still favor that shallow side. You don't want to get caught cutting into your, your feathers. Alright, got a nice split on that. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here so you guys can see this. So this is really thick now, this part, this, this quill that's sticking out. That's not going to mount well on the arrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to profile that down. And you could do it with sandpaper. You could even do it with a knife. But since we are here at the house and we have power tools, I'm going to take a belt sander. I'm going to stick it in my straight little clamp here. And I'm going to profile this down really quick. See, that's been all taken off, but it's still kind of wide. So what I'm going to do is take a pair of scissors, and I'm going to trim this down and taper it with a pair of scissors. And as you get to the end, you just want to kind of make it as skinny, not as skinny as you can, but skinnier than the, uh, the rest of the fletching. And the goal is to try to make it look like this one. You're not going to use these together. I mean, you could, but I'm going to keep this consistent. So I mark these with a little pencil or a sharpie. This is the fat side. So this is the fat side. I use, uh, I'll take three fat ones. I'll put that on an arrow, I'll take three skinny ones, put that on an arrow. That way I'm keeping everything consistent. I'm going to make a couple more, and then we're going to put them on a stick, otherwise known as an arrow. Okay, now it is time to mount these fletchings onto our arrow. I'm not using the primitive waves, but we're going to be using a um, fletching jig. You can use these for putting on your veins, on your carbon arrows and everything. I'm, I'm probably going to do some of that myself uh, this season because making your own arrows is fun, y'all. I'm telling you. Like, it, this is not a, a cheaper way of doing things, but it, when you put work into something, like you just have more pride in it while you're hunting, fishing with it, whatever. I'm using a right helical clamp. Uh, the helical just means that there is a, a curvature in it and it is going to uh, basically follow the natural ways of the, uh, the feather itself. 
So the feather itself naturally wants to turn and cup and that is going to put more wind behind the feather and get it spinning faster than if you mounted them straight. Um, the distance I'm mounting this back uh, I've got it marked here on my clamp but it's just enough where my, I can get my fingers in there and the fletchings won't be touching the bow. Uh, if, your, if your fingers are touching those fletchings while you're you know getting ready to draw back it's making noise might spook off a deer don't want that so so I've put it a little farther forward the farther back you go usually the more stability you get so this is all about getting a whitetail or a pig or whatever within 20 yards and hopefully like 10 yards and getting a shot on it I'm not going for distance you know, I'm trying to practice and make sure I can make a 20 yard shot but I'm trying to get close and go for stability so I'm, going, I'm using some uh, some fletch fuse it's like a super glue and I'm going to put that just right on the, the quill, what was the quill just a little bit and I put a little dab on the very end and the top and we're going to squeeze that on there for about 30 seconds and when I take this out of here I like to take my fingers on anywhere that's not flush and I'll just press that down between fishing and doing this my fingers get crusty alright I'll stick it back in the jig I'll go ahead and turn it and turn the feather with it turn the arrow with it almost done so we got two on there we'll turn it one more time it's got just a little bit of high spot in it. Take it out of here and press that front, front and back. Make sure it's all good. Now that is full thickness, flu flu style right there. That arrow will slow down after about 25, 30 yards and really start to die. Uh, let's take it over to the feather burner now and I'm going to show you guys how that thing works. It's pretty fun. This is the Young Feather Burner. Uh, it just makes life easier and I formed this wire right here. This wire gets real hot, heats up and then it, um, it burns through the feathers and this is a a five inch shield cut design so you gotta be very careful not to touch that thing when it gets hot it gets hot in seconds um, but all I do is put the arrow in like this and then twist it and then all those fletchings will come out uh, the same so it's very consistent we'll uh, let that glue dry for just a second longer and then put it in there by the way Osage got a pretty healthy supply of it right here got some staves for uh, for some buddies some of these I'm gonna split down even more um, the ones that aren't you know totally crooked this one I made out of a branch and uh, turned out to have some issues um, so I had to uh, it broke I didn't didn't tiller it properly and I had to work it back down so it's now another 55 inch bow but it is it was 28 pounds at full draw. I'm thinking now, after I've had a little uh, reflex and flip the tips, so I flip the tips upside down, uh, we'll probably up, be up to 30 pounds, I would imagine. Shout out to my buddy Toby for letting me uh, cut down a couple of his trees on his land. This wood's going to sit here and dry for about six to eight months, and then I'll start working on it. So it's a long process.
Watching that just doesn't get old. It's so satisfying. There was one that was a little weaker, a little weaker feather that uh, has a little, yeah, it's got a little more flex to it. But otherwise, pretty good. It's definitely going to work. One little step that I'll do with a Dremel is I'm just going to shave down the very end of these uh, these quills of the fletchings so that it just accepts uh, accepts the thread that I'm going to wrap on here a little easier. Next we're going to wrap. So I've got some 40 pound braid and I'm just going to wrap it around the front of these fletchings. I'm not sure what you call this wrap. I've used it on tying uh, flies and crappie jigs before. But you basically start with a loop and you go over that. Wrap up around it and then you'll bring that tag in through that loop that you've wrapped around and then it pulls into the wrap that you made. I'm going to take this little tag in here. I've already pulled this thread through this loop. I'm going to pull that down into, into the whole wrap until it's almost out of there. Now that wraps all tight. Now we'll cut our tag ends. Now we're just going to add a little glue. I go ahead and just kind of give it a little goob on there, a little gooby. Goob this one up, unlike the, the fletchings. Just take this little stick here, smooth it out. That needs to dry, but the next step is going to be adding our fat and our wax. So we've got some, some little beeswax here. Gonna cut me off a chunk of the beeswax, and I've got some bacon grease in here. So throw that in there, and then we'll mix those together. Put her over a little open flame. You could just use the uh, the bacon grease or any kind of animal fat, but that wax will give it a little water resistance. So I'm going to mix these together. Okay, that kind of looks like a nice glass of bourbon right there. I'm going to let that cool for just a second. And we're just going to rub it down. While that's cooling, I forgot to do an important step here. You should really do this before you do the, the fletchings. Add a little thread here to my knock. All right, now it's done. So we got thread on the knock. We've got our thread on the, the fletchings. And uh, let's see how hot this stuff is. I'm gonna put my finger in there and get scalded. Yeah, pretty hot. Semi-warm to the touch. Hmm, still pretty warm, but it's kind of got a nice, a niceness to it. I can feel the wax around my fingers. It's like I'm in the spa right now. I'm in the archery spa. Oh yeah, there's something therapeutic about that. And if you were doing this around like a campfire in the woods, that would be ultimate. I've got some other arrows that I'm going to be using some different uh, like traditional wood finishers on, but for these primitive ones that I want, this is what I want to take my first deer with a self bow with. I'm just using using what the what what the natives use basically. Then I'm going to set that out in the sun for just a minute, let the uh, the wood warm up, and kind of soak that in.
this arrow in from outside from drying for about an hour or two and uh, that wax and that fat is soaked in it's looking great and now it's time to put a point on it so we can either put a uh, broadhead or a fill point or a primitive point which I don't have and I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about that because some of you commented about this uh, making some some primitive uh, points um, some arrowheads basically to put on these to finish these arrows I would love nothing more so I have these right here I got some I have some hundreds and I have some 125s worst case scenario you know if I don't have anything uh, fully primitive I can put these on here I would love 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 for you guys to finish off these arrows with me if you know how to do that um, PO box is linked down below again try to keep it around that 125 if, if you got a scale and, and can weigh just try to get it close to that but if not we will make it work so I'm just gonna grab one of these 125s here stick it on A little bit of arrow glue here. Usually like to go six to eight seconds. And then press it on. I almost slipped through my hand with that bacon grease. Completed arrow. Uh, this glue I have on the back here usually takes a few hours to dry. I usually like to let it go overnight. Um, the front glue is fine, so I think we might be able to shoot this. We'll stick it with the other arrows, and let's go take some shots. It's the most fun part. Enjoy. Nice, cold fruit or vegetable for a chicken on a hot summer day in Texas. That might as well be a Frosty Coors for myself. Just the equivalent. So I've made myself a little rule on shooting these arrows because I've learned a lesson. So I'd never shoot more than uh, three at a time because uh, when you start hitting your target, um, you start feeling good and then you know, you're putting them on top of each other. These are self knocks. You can't just replace these knocks. You gotta replace the whole arrow or dramatically reduce the arrow. It's, it's a big mess. So only shoot three at a time. That way you reduce your chances of Robin Hooding one. Okay, so this is my Osage 40-pound uh, bow, this little short bow here. Probably what I'm going to be hunting with, unless I build something better. Probably will. It's my first one, so I didn't do that great of a job, but it's, it's cool. It's special because it's the first one. It's got a lot of different repairs on it. <laughs> There's a lot going on with this bow, but it's unique. So I've got two of the arrows that I've previously built, and then I've got the arrow we just built. So let's shoot a couple. Shoot a couple of the old ones and see how the new one compares. Got a little target, just 10 yards right here. Just ride a bull. Just low a bull. and the one we just made. And just left a bull. So, didn't hit the bull, hit all around it. Let's back it up. Let's uh, shoot a few more. Thank you. 
pretty decent right there. Those are all fun targets. This is where it counts right here. The old white tail. 12 yard scenario. Yeah, buddy. That's what we want right there. If I can do that in October, I'll be such a happy boy. I'll be such a happy boy. Oh my gosh, I can just kiss him. That's all I've got to do, guys. I'm just going to keep practicing, I'm trying to get consistent. You know, it all goes out the window when, uh, when the deer walks out in front of you, but that's where the muscle memory kicks in. Send me your primitive points if you know how to do it. Love nothing more than to take your point and send it through a beautiful whitetail this fall. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, man. Wild bird feathers topped with bee wax and some animal fat. Just gets the wild animal juices flowing. But with that, I thank you guys for tuning in to another episode in the great outdoors. Uh, if you want to do this, it's not too terribly difficult. It is so satisfying though. Uh, it is just as satisfying as lipping that big fish and bringing it up to your face and sniffing it. May the good Lord bless you. Godspeed and I'll see you.